Hello, everybody. Um, hello, and welcome to the panel of IT hiring from immigration to digital transformation. First of all, I would like to thank Inat for the, for the invitation, and thank you, Milena, for the wonderful event. Um, I'm very happy to be here and, and meet the, the, so many wonderful people in Belgrade. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, the global trends concerning ICT, uh, the ICT sector, and together with our speakers we're going to try to identify the main challenges, uh, as well as here in Belgrade uh, and, and uh, the rest of, of Europe, uh, and we're going to try to leave you with some best practices and takeaways um, that you can then implement in, in your own industries. Before we dig in, I would like to uh, introduce myself and to also ask our speakers to introduce themselves briefly. So my name is Juana Burawi. I am uh, the co-founder of Romanian IT, which is the global community of Romanians in tech. And I'm also the partnerships manager at the European Young Innovators Forum uh, based in Belgium. Uh, who would like to start? It's open, yeah. My name is Stefan Salom. I am one of the founders of the Infostud company. This is one of the largest Serbian internet companies. And um, there I am director of development, in mostly in, uh, in charge of, let's say, uh, communicating with the IT sector and seeing what's happening in our IT community, among other things. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Moshe Sarfati. I'm uh, the co-founder of uh, Krypton Venture Capital. We are VC based out of Tel Aviv in Israel. Uh, we are one of the only funds in Israel that managed to return cash over cash to our investors within, within two years and uh, do forex on their investment within four years. Um, I was also the Israeli national champion in squash, so if someone wants to play afterwards, you're more than invited. Um, and uh, I really hope that we're going to have interesting and fun panel. And I really encourage uh, I know that it's usually hard, but I encourage you guys even to, to ask and communicate with us throughout the panel in order to make it interesting for everyone. Hello, I'm Armin Kanjalic. I'm from Bosnia-Herzegovina. So I'm representative of Humanic. It's a blockchain solution for banking the unbanked. So it's kind of like a um, social impact blockchain project, which is super popular now. Uh, yeah, I, I w I'm advised not to reveal that information. <laughs> good, good. Thank you very much. Now that you got to know us, I would like to play a good old raise of hands and see who are the people in the room, because I think it's very important um, to see who the people listening to us are. So let's, let's play a game. Ra raise your hand if you traveled here for the conference. Wow, wow. very impressive. Raise your hand if you're a developer. Good, good. Raise your hand if you're an entrepreneur. Okay. Wow. Any other questions? <laughs> Raise your hand if you're an investor. <laughs> <laughs> Raise your hand if you have blockchain. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay, so we all know that the, the internet and the digital technologies are transforming um, our world, basically. And in the last few years, the, the employment in the ICT sector has basically skyrocketed. It grew with 40% um, uh, since 2000, uh, 2006, which basically is like um, 10 times, it, it grew 10 times faster than, any, uh, than the employment in any other industries out there. So basically more than 9 million people are working just in the 28 EU states are working in the ICT sector. Digitalization and automation is changing our lives, is changing the way we do things, is changing the way we interact with each other, with our society, with our businesses. So basically it's, it's, uh, it has changed all aspects of our lives. Uh, it has also in increased efficiency, productivity in the workspace, but at the same time, it has made main, many, many uh, jobs obsolete or has changed dramatically how these jobs are, um, are done. So if we're looking, in, uh, if we're looking at the trends uh, going forward around globalization, automation, AI, uh, blockchain, why not? Um, uh, studies show that by 2030, 
40% of the jobs that we have today will not exist by then. And um, most of the people who are in school right now or, or young, young professionals, in the future they will be engaged in jobs that have not been created yet. So in this, in, uh, uh, against this background, the first question I would like to address the panel is, um, is um, how they, in their own words, and against their backgrounds, define digital transformation. Okay, so digital transformation. Yeah, for, for, for me it's just a fancy word from transition to fourth industrial revolution. And yeah, if we look some other uh, industry revolutions like, I don't know, like, like, like blaming, I don't know, AI that takes away jobs, it's, it's, I mean, it's like blaming car industry that the courage riders are, are without jobs. So the so wor world goes forward. Like, we like it or not, some jobs are, 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 are becoming meaningless, but some other industries, uh, some this car industry, it, it opened, in fact, many, many new kind of jobs that didn't exist before car creation. Yes, people who, who were into horses, they, 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 they were obsolete, but so for us at this moment it's really important like to fall, think forward and to uh, to think uh, in fact what would what are the skills needed for 21st century and adopt education to it great thank you um i i totally agree that uh this fancy world you know, uh it's, i i couldn't i call it as development and progress and you know for us and investors and I, I, I guess that I'm covering the investor seat for us we can see it and feel it every day when we go to the office and we, we suddenly see a group of three people with an idea of something that we've never heard before or they're representing the next wave and it doesn't really matter it was fintech or blockchain or you name it so the, all those waves are just development and progress of our lives and I, I definitely think and agree that we should not be afraid from it. We should be adapted to it. I think it's an amazing opportunity for everyone who sits here in the room, uh, and, and for, especially for the young generation who sits in the university, and they all get frustrated that they don't get an A grade in microeconomics one-on-one -on -one or something. And, and whenever I speak with them, I always tell them, guys, don't worry. By the time you're going to graduate, you're going to have so many things that you will need to know that you're gonna know and nobody else around you in your university and your professor that gonna even understand what you are saying. So that's why it's an amazing opportunity and just to open your eyes to see what is the next wave and just to enjoy and try to surf it. Yeah, I guess we, we all more, uh, more or less think alike. Uh, I don't completely agree. I think this might be a, a, a bit deeper change than the former revolu uh, industrial revolutions, but I. We we managed to pass as a humanity. It's, it's faster goes. for sure. Yeah, it's definitely much, much faster. Faster. faster uh, the tricky part is going to be that uh, we need to to compete not only with the one, let's say, uh, change from courage to car or to to uh, automated production, but we're going to have probably AI who can compete in so many areas with with us uh, uh, humans and that we'll need to redefine what, in which areas are we better than AI. So I think that will be the key part. I just uh, saw the, the video of Jack Ma, and then he was talking exactly about that. What, is, what are the areas of life when we are going to be better than, than the computers? And uh, uh, a lot of those are social-wise, so of course that's going to, to, to increase. It's going to take a lot of time. The computer becomes better than us if it's ever going to happen in human-to-human -human relations and I hope it won't. So that's one area. The second area is uh, those skills. I think that the more it's becoming more and more important to, to build skill for acquiring skills. So no fixed skills are going to happen because I think the time is shortening and so many things will change. So that might be a bit different, but so many other opportunities will open, so I, it's going to be fun. Good, good. Uh, at the end, maybe if we have five minutes left, we would love to hear your take on this and uh, maybe some, some feedback from other our, our speakers uh, said. Okay, so uh, let's start a bit with the, with the big picture. Um, I'm, I'm Romanian and as I told you, I co-founded Romanian IT, which is a community 
um, designed especially to um, come and, 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 and do something against the, the, the brain drain, the massive brain drain phenomenon that's happening in the CE region right now. So basically, um, uh, in Romania and in the CE region in general, the talent is leaving the country and is relocating to the US or to the most developed uh, startup and tech uh, ecosystem across the world. So um, this is leaving the countries without, without um, talented young people to employ in, in companies. This is, um, this is affecting innovation. It's affecting the development of the local ecosystem. So I would really like to see what our speakers, from their perspective, like, how do you, what, what measures do you think uh, governments maybe, uh, policymakers, I don't know, uh, entrepreneurs, to develop the local ecosystem in such a way that these people can find opportunities here at home and, and they do not feel the urge or they don't feel ob obligated to leave the country in order to find opportunities. Uh, okay, uh, as for the Serbia, I don't think that we have a typical brain drain so strong. Uh, recently I've heard that for the first time in a while, uh, two best uh, students so far, one of the best faculties in, in, in Serbia, uh, electrotechnical faculty in Belgrade, stayed in country. S and they stayed, one went to the Microsoft Development Center, the other went to Nordus Company, which is famous for top 11 uh, game. So um, we don't have direct brain drain in terms of people leaving country, because uh, among other things, uh, uh, among other things, uh, especially IT, of course, I'm talking uh, especially about IT professionals, a lot of them are choosing to stay. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, even now, I think very good programmers in Serbia can learn, uh, e earn more than 2,000 euros per month, so many even more than that. And when you compare the, the, the standard of living you get for that money in Belgrade, it turns out it's not much lower than the money you would, the standard of life you would get in, let's say, Western uh, Europe for being an IT professional. So uh, in that terms, I, I don't think they're living due to material reasons, and they can also have quite an interesting jobs. One of the reasons why they do leave is the uncertainty of the society in overall. So are they going to have good enough doctors in the hospitals? Are their kids going to have good teachers? And that's a very broad problem to be solved. Uh, and that's up to the, the improvement of the whole uh, country that we need to, to hopefully achieve. And uh, what needs to happen, by my opinion, is that uh, in this economy, uh, IT specialists are very prized resource. And what's happening, most of IT in Serbia is working to enrich other companies through outsource. It's nice, of course, outsource has its benefits, uh, standard of living has rose for those people. But uh, we need to s uh, improve, uh, increase possibilities that we start uh, on the long run, making businesses of our own from Serbia, which will not only employ IT specialists and coders, but also product development specialists, sales team, customer, uh, graphic designers, and so forth, so forth. So not only programmers can benefit of, of this trend. And um, there might be many paths to there, uh, that, but I think one of the, the next steps would be for our outsourcing companies to try to get out of just coding for outside and try to do more than that. Try to uh, become more and more active in product development, uh, uh, market research, uh, uh, digital marketing, and to try to learn more and more of those things that are necessary to build your own company. So coding is just one aspect, and we're good at it, but we lack all the others, and we need to build on them here in, in Serbia, at least. Um, yeah, I totally agree, but I will think that I'll take your... Um, uh, your opinion and gonna play with it a bit. I'm gonna take it, attack it from a different angle. And by saying that you want the local IT in development and outsource company to, you know, to develop their own, they need something that they still at the moment is still missing. Uh, um, and again, it all starts from the university and sometimes in culture. And it's a combination of, in order for that to happen, and obviously that's what should be happening, is there's a combination of two things. One is many small success stories uh, in one end, and second, it's cultural. Uh, in Hebrew, we call it chutzpah. Okay? Chutzpah means um, it's, it's basically a word that combines two, uh, two attributes. One is that if people uh, like to confront each other, if they don't afraid to say their opinion, 
obviously, if you go to Japan and you're going to say your opinion, everybody's going to say yes, and I, I hope no one, nobody's here from Japan. You're from Japan, you agree? You agree with me? Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> well, you see, you're not typical Japanese because you already said that you agree, right? Mostly they're going to do like this and that's it. So, <laughs> so first of all, it's like when you come to Israel, you say your opinion, then you're going to find 10, ten people that are going to argue with you. Even, they, even if they agree with you, they're going to argue with you just for the sake of the argument. So that's one. That's a confrontation. And second is emotionally expressive, okay? Uh, I'm sure, again, if we'll go to Japan, Nobody in the business is going to tell me, hey, Moshe, I love you, okay? But here, I don't mind to sit here on the stage and I say, guys, I love each one of you. And I'm not shy to say that, okay? So I think in Israel, it's the top extreme. When you go to Israel, everybody says opinion, and at the same time, they don't afraid to, to be emotionally expressive. And, and I think whenever you have this, whenever you have people with a lot of chutzpah in one end, and that there are enough success stories in the ecosystem, they are not afraid to go from being a development company that giving services to say, hey, I did this, it's mine. I think that I can do this even better by myself, for myself. I'm not afraid to say to my boss, bye-bye. And you also see a company next to you that actually managed to do that. And you say, if they did it, I'm smarter, I can do it even better. So I think it's, it's those two small things are something that can be adapted, that can be played, and they can start and can be changed really fast. It all starts from the universities, and I give a lot of lectures here in Serbia in universities, and I, you know, professors and the faculty people, and I'm sorry to say it, they are still 20 years ago, and they're not saying, you know, they're staying on the, 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 uh, on the pure book educational level, and they're not educating for entrepreneurship. So, and I think the combination of chutzpah, Success stories can actually bring to what, uh, what you just say. And uh, by the way, I love each one of you, okay? <laughs> I published a research about uh, startup investment innovation ecosystem in emerging Europe covering this, I call it entrepreneurial renaissance across Central Eastern Europe. So we were comparing 26 countries uh, of Central Eastern Europe, and I noticed some trends. So, so like kind of like like by no, by noticing, I see like what country is behind what, like and for example, for me, like Serbia is like three years after Bulgaria. So, what are trends in Bulgaria two three years ago? It's coming now, and in many Central Eastern Europe. Com uh, European countries, there was super strong outsourcing industry and, and people were tired of doing product-based and doing product-based, but then they, they got into the problem where they lack soft skills, where they lack marketing, sales, where they, where they can actually build a product but cannot put, put it to the market, etc. So, uh, and uh, like, and it's important for and so in the, in this report like it's it's like we see that that it's many aspects actually affect it so so in for example in Serbia there was a lack of capital available there were a lack of, of good mentorship good good uh, success stories that will actually share share their be be these leaders of 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 uh, of role models and this is now coming so there are more and more quality accelerators there are mentors there there is like so now there will be in fact in Serbia much more people leaving outsourcing company and starting their own startups and what is uh, also important about this brain drain so this is also a topic that we covered very much in the in this report so so, for example, if we take, for example, in Ukraine, there is like 100,000 IT professionals, but they are, uh, yeah, they are, they are higher middle class because they earn a lot of money in, in comparing to, 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 to the average. But still, they are un unhappy because there is like uh, there is like un uncertainty of life. There is like a lot of these conflicts, a lot of brainwash, political this 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 with the, the, the oppressors. They they're free mind and they just want to leave country. It doesn't matter if they will receive same money and have bigger costs. At least they will have more quality of life. And yeah, so for example, I used to live in Baltic states. In Baltic states, in past five years, in 
previous period, there was like big brain drain, but in fact it was brain gain for, for Baltics because all these people who went, I don't know, to Ireland, to UK, to Germany, they went to do some jobs, to earn some money, in fact they gained experience, they, they gained, they understood like, like where, at what stage the world is today and they brought this knowledge back and they became the, the, the thought leaders, the, 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 the mentors of, uh, and, and the drivers of, of, of this entrepreneurial renaissance or whatever uh, tr digital transformation or, or transformation to 21st century. Therefore, in Bosnia, for example, there is enormous brain drain because there is like super high uh, youth unemployment. Uh, youth, yeah, everyone cuts you off on, 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 on start. Like it's impossible in Bosnia to, to propose an idea because if as soon as you, you propose innovative idea, you, you get hit back like, like, don't forget where you live. It's not possible here. You cannot start. And of people leave it. And I encourage, in fact, boss, I encourage brain drain in Bosnia. These kids, they must go outside to understand where the world is today in order to come back and actually show what's normal and what's not. So you're basically saying that they should have an infusion of, of the right culture and mentality, go outside. Yes. Get but the... but look, uh, there is also one one more level. Well, well, Bosnians are leaving to Germany in seek seek for for better life, for more order, to running away from chaos. All around Thailand, South Africa, and and around, I meet German guys who are leaving Germany because they they search something else, peace of mind or something else. So today it's very normal this migration all around the world, and I'm I, I'm fan of of borderless. So so whoever finds their spot in the world, I think they should be free to go there and find their place. I completely agree. Just let me say this. I completely agree, but we must take uh, take into account the fact that the ecosystem these people are living from, okay, Germany will be fine because there are other people coming. Here, nobody's coming. They're just leaving. Yeah. So this is something that we need to think about long term. How do we address that? So uh, apart from all the things said there, uh, uh, one of the ma measures I think government should do, and I, I hope they will, there were some, some ideas, is to allow very low um, income tax and uh, job income tax for uh, an, uh, foreign nationals, for example, who come to Serbia and get a three times every salary, so it's not for everybody, but just for top talent. Mm -hmm. And maybe that could be a way to, to get uh, people from abroad to come here and share the culture. And I think that's also one of the way, of course, we can send our people and hope they'll come back, but maybe we can uh, uh, try to make some Germans, UK guys, come to Serbia and have much cheaper uh, cost of life and relatively high salary if we, they don't need to pay our taxes and our pension system. Maybe they would be uh, inclined to come here for, let's say, two years and then share the culture. Yep. Uh, they would love that. I, 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 that's it's proven. Idea. And I think that's one of the things our government needs to do, to make it easier for them to come here and to make it lucrative for them to come here for two, three years. Not for long term. If they're going to stay to live here, they need to pay all the taxes. But if somebody comes for two or three years, he'll share a lot of knowledge and it's okay he doesn't pay taxes. We learn a lot okay. from him. Absolutely. Good. Uh, we kind of went a little bit into the next question, and it's 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 about, of course, about education, which for me is the most important tool we have for everything, for for the for the ICT sector, uh, a war on unemployment, uh, the brain drain. So education uh, comes to fix all this if it's done right. Right now, education as it is, the state of it now, it is not equipped to um, to help these people adapt to what is coming, to the changes that are coming in mentality, culture, socially, ev in all aspects of life. What do you think that, uh, like, what approach should the, the, the schools, the, the high schools, the colleges uh, adapt in order to 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 uh, have successful uh, candidates for, for the employment industry and even more how they should collaborate with companies from the get-go so the transition between between uh, studies and, and employment m should be like more and more um, straightforward and, and direct like how can we make that happen? Well, uh, if you're going to go this way, I would like to talk a bit about elementary education. This is where I think Serbia done quite a good, good things. I think we can share that. Um, there is a, uh, a, a few of the Serbian uh, largest digital companies made something called uh, the Digital Serbia Initiative. And one of the things it supports is a project called Petlja, uh, which in Serbia means both loop and guts. 
and uh, the goal is a loop or you, you have uh, you can say do you have do you have petlia do you have guts to do something so da li imaš petlje da nešto uradiš so um, it aims to teach um, elementary school kids um, programming but not uh, in a codified sense but the real algorithmical text programming uh, and uh, it was mainly financed by Microsoft Development Center now all the IT industry is financing it a very long term investment so it's really investment in Serbia not not just in IT and the government did a great uh, great thing they allowed us so it's going to be obligatory from the next year all the kids are going to learn python starting from the 6th grade and of course the goal is not that everybody becomes programmers it doesn't make sense it can't happen but i strongly believe what used to be uh, uh, mathematics was used to promote a way of thinking some 10 20 100 years back i would say but today i think it's better to teach kids algorithmic way of thinking because whatever happens with our jobs uh, the, the humans will need to recognize algori uh, possible algorithms to do things to optimize things to, to automate things uh, maybe in a long term term if ai gets better in it than us it can also become obsolete but for a long term algorithmical view of things is going to be something that gives an edge to to, to so you're to basically people. saying not teach them ex not teach them exact things teach them the way how to think yeah, about stuff that's that's uh, and that's good. what we are trying that's to really achieve good. and, and uh, i really I am proud that the government recognized that and that we have really curriculum in which 11, that's 11 or 12 year old kids uh, are now being taught to type in the code of Python and to learn how to, to do algorithmical thinking. So that's one of the ways in elementary school. I, I right. guess you have better ideas for university, especially you, Moshe. Uh, first of all, it's an amazing program. I wish I was part of uh, one of those, learning Python or any other development. Uh, um, language, but actually I think in order to answer uh, this question, maybe we should uh, use some of the students here. Who is a student here? Or close to a student? Okay. And who is, how do you say guts in Serbian? Pet Petla. Okay, whatever. I hope I say that, that. So who is a student and has guts? Raise his hand. Okay, you're the one there. skills to talk with people, um, public speaking and stuff like that. Okay. And I also learned about digital marketing and how to promote my business and... Uh, Perfect. So basically we have two courses here and, 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 I, and I do it a lot every time I'm going to ask, I promise that I ask each one of you. The courses that you always remember, remember are the ones that, or the least important ones, which means they're done, they're non-credited, they are not obligatory, there is something in the side that they are not part of your curriculum and your like core education, okay? Or it's something that it's you actually try to do with your hands, okay? And that you actually see that what you studied actually going and working in the world. And and I think that and, and you can go for first grade and you go can go to masters. It's always there is a line that always connects that and and the 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 more you're gonna bring into those schools, universities, the more you're gonna bring external people that showing and doing whatever they necessary right now at the moment, okay? There, as we said in the beginning, there are waves and a lot of changes. So, and, and all those organizations in universities to make a change, it takes five years. So, at least, so every time, in, in five years from now, we're not gonna know what's gonna be interesting and who are gonna be the leaders and the interesting people. But at the end of the day, the more you're going to bring people from the outside, from other ecosystems, from other countries, from other disciplinaries, it's going to be more interesting. It's going to be more sharing uh, interest, going to show that it's possible. And then I think that's going to be the most uh, significant change in those organizations. So good luck to you two in your uh, last exam. Yeah. So I believe that the educational system is broken. It's meaningless at, at this stage. Well, yeah. huh? Yes, because because I went through it. I mean, I went to like, let's call it Bosnian, like st electronic engineering faculty. And there, there is so many useless stuff. I, it wasted my time. Uh, yeah, I would, because I, whatever I was, I was doing, I wanted to apply it. And I was doing, as a student, I was doing jobs. And then I realized, yeah, I passed all these exams that are useful for me, that I, knowledge, I gained the knowledge that I wanted. 
and there were these exams which I did not even want to, to, to attend. And in the end, I was in, in, the, in that stage that, okay, I passed everything that I wanted to acquire knowledge, and there is like a bunch of subjects that, that next two, three years I need to, to, to study just to get grades, to pass this. And, and, and I already am doing something that I love, and this, this, this knowledge will not contribute anything for me being better, being more efficient. And therefore, I, I changed the faculty. I went to, to, to Vienna. I found out this, this concept in, in Germany. It's called Fachschule, University of Applied Sciences, where everything is more practical. Everything is ex do experiment, go to lab, do teamwork. Yeah, I never did teamwork in, in Bosnia. Everything is about teamwork when you do, do work, but you spend 12 years in school sitting alone, don't, don't help each other, don't... Yeah, <laughs> I like the and, passion and you put in this. Is, this is why it's broken. <laughs> like, like we, there, there are skills like, like emotional intelligence, like teamwork that, that will help us to, to be better than AI, and we, we are totally disregarding these skills in school, and this is why I'm saying it, the education itself really needs to be reinvented, rethink so how really we are. I like that all of you have basically are saying the same thing, so it's more about getting people from the outside, seeing the bigger picture, getting culturally uh, innovative, let's say, um, and, and getting your hands dirty with stuff and, and the practical stuff. Yes, I, I, I completely agree. This is the, the, the case in the Romanian uh, educational system, and, and it, it seems that we, we are on the same, on the same side. Okay, um, we're running a bit late on time, and I still have a lot of questions for you, but if I would have to choose one, uh, it would be regarding the other hot topic of the moment, which is women in tech and women entrepreneurs. First of all, all the ladies in the room, let, show, show, show me your hands. Okay, good, good. I'm happy you're here and I'm very proud of you. <laughs> uh, as, a, as a developer, I used to develop for a while and I was a designer and I go to a lot of tech conferences and usually I find myself among the very few women. Now it's getting better in the last few years, but in the beginning I was almost all, all the time the only girl in the room. Um, uh, tech is not a vertical, tech is uh, everywhere in our in our society. Uh, tech is in, in everything that we do from 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 when we wake up until the evening. And, and basically, women, uh, even if in Europe, 54% of the population are women, uh, less than, than 40 of them have tech skills. So basically, this means that they're not part of the conversation. They're not part of the conversation for what's going to happen, for the future, for their future, for the future of the children, and so on and so forth. So this is something that must happen. And I would like to see how do you think uh, we, we can empower more women to, uh, to, to, to get technical, to, uh, to uh, work in ICT um, uh, um, uh, jobs, and, and even further, how, we can, how can we encourage more women to become entrepreneurs, and what is the cultural bias behind this? When it's about women, nobody wants to answer anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, on the contrary, this is one of my favorite, really favorite topics. Uh, generally speaking, in my company, um, we have literally 50-50 split uh, in management, uh, top, uh, top level management, middle level management, lower level management, and generally in the number of employees. Only department where the, the male is strictly dominant is the IT. And uh, honestly, uh, I might sound a, a bit scary. I'm not sure, I mean, maybe you will disagree. I'm not sure it's necessary that we've now force women to go into IT. In my opinion, the uh, job of a society is to enable women to, to do whatever she feels like. And uh, it, when it's it not about forcing them, but we have this huge lack of, of, of employment. And right now, people companies have a very uh, hard time hiring IT talent. And uh, at the moment, 83%, at least in Europe, 83% of, of people who work in ICT are men. So this is like something that we need to cover, this, this gap here. Uh, that's certainly, and I, I believe one of the ways it's going to happen is by uh, everybody seeing it's, it's a, such a profitable thing to do. But in my opinion, uh, one of the l skills we're going to lack a lot is the skill of, let's say, product manager. So the, the persons who tell IT people what to do, that doesn't make too much sense in a pure outsourced company, but in any other company it makes a lot of sense. Somebody to connect the real world problem with uh, algorithm, I personally believe that due to many skills, uh, women uh, uh, different, let's say, culturally and through uh, adult, their 
growth uh, attain, I think women can be better than that. So I wouldn't just focus on, on programming jobs. I guess uh, it, our goal should be to promote women into all those new type of jobs. So if we just look at programming, maybe there will always be more uh, male than female. But if you look at all these new jobs, like product manager, like management in, uh, in overall, I think we can strive to 50-50, and that's what happened in my company. So I believe we just need to keep on talking about this, promoting and helping women find themselves in this new world. So maybe it's not programming, maybe it's going to be a product management, but that's also very good and very okay. Yeah, I, I, I really love your answer, yes. Good, good. Um, well, I can, I can answer, I guess, from my point of view, and in my experience so far, with all the women entrepreneurs that I've met so far and, and the companies that we invested in, always, uh, all the companies that were managed by women were companies to uh, achieve their goals, they were more stable, there are a lot of benefits, and I personally would love to see many more uh, startup companies led by women, but, um, and I personally think, I, I think that women are much smarter than men, you know, and we can go there forever, but in the end of the day, I totally agree, and I think that I Israel, it's a big debate, okay? There are many panels about it, there's a lot of money pushing and creating organization to support women and all of that, and, but at the end of the day, I totally agree with you. I think it's actually damaging the situation, because then it creates, uh, uh, it actually creates a debate about nothing. Okay, uh, it creates debate about. You agree with me? Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, I five. Okay. It's uh, it's uh, it actually creates a debate about nothing. Um, I, I think it's a progress. Obviously, you know, women were not going into, as you said, to to such faculties like maybe 20 years ago. But now, when they see that there there is benefits going there, they're obviously going to go there, they're much smarter, they're going to study, are they going to do this? Uh, and it's all a matter of time. And the fact that we discuss about it all the time and pushing to do something and try to help them, you know, we're actually damaging because we're going to create companies that are being sponsored from because someone wants to give money to women entrepreneur and it's not actually going to damage her life and, the de and they're going to damage the company itself because they, if it's a strong company, it should get money. If it's not a strong company, it should not get money, not just because it's a woman or another woman, but um, so that's my I, two cents, and we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna fight on that now for we five are, minutes. Yes, are, let's are. do it. <laughs> uh, I know, and this is, I, I completely agree with you. I don't think that women should be like, we should not hold their hands and treat them in a special way. But at the, at the moment, there's a lot of bias, uh, because for example, I, I, I know for a fact that VCs and investors in general, if they would have to choose between a, a, a female or a male founder, and let's say the company is, as, as, is, is equally good, they will, most of them will choose the men. Don't because, agree. 100% yes, don't because agree. Because we have, we have done a study on this. Don't is, agree. They basically, they, they take into account the fact that maybe women are, are going to have a child and then they're going to neglect this. They are taking into account the fact that um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, startups founded by women are into like social topics and they don't find this is something that would scale. So there are a lot of bias against this. I'm no. not saying that we should help women in a special way just to help them get more connected to investors and into opportunities. Let's bring 10 investors to sit here on, this, on, the, on the, the panel. And I can tell you, I, I don't agree. Women that are more, when they have uh, kids, they are more efficient at work. By, you know, when uh, they're more productive, they think smarter, they focus only on the most important things. We, ju we just had a, a great uh, example uh, of that, and I completely I agree with you. I can, <laughs> I can fight for on with what you said for a long time. I, can, I, I speak with, you know, especially in Israel, that we are a pretty developed ecosystem. We are not biased. We are, you know, we, we, we don't really care if it's women or men. I personally think that, I, and I said at the beginning, I think companies led by women are, are more efficient. They, they achieve their goals. They're more struct this more... Uh, structure the right way. Energies are much uh, much easier and better for everyone in the room. It's it's a long discussion. I don't agree with what you said. Sorry. I don't agree with what I said either. But this is, I'm saying this is what ha what happening yeah. right now. <laughs> okay, come to Israel. I don't. Uh, uh, I would just like to add. I think that the uh, way how we the, the greatest downside of being a woman, obviously, is that uh, maternity leave. And I think that's something that needs to be addressed. Uh, so there are many things that every country can address it, and that's the main issue. So how to enable women to be both mother and to pursue a career. Uh, the good side is that we are all ex-communist countries. So I think one of the things that really happened here, thanks to communism, is that we really 
are more or less equal in many sense, and I re I'm really walking the talk here, as I said, in my company, it's very 50-50 everywhere, except in IT, but it means a bit more manager is women. So, uh, generally, uh, we need to find a way to enable women to be mothers and to pursue a career. And whenever we t talk about all these things, I think that should become the topic. How to change the laws, how to structure child support, how to do things in order to enable women to do both. And not how to just promote woman, uh, woman entrepreneurship, it's too abstract for me. Why especially woman entrepreneurship? I, let's promote Southern Serbia entrepreneurship instead of Northern Serbia. It doesn't make too much sense, except if you put it how to enable women to be mother and successful businesswoman great. at the same time. Great, great. I completely agree. Armin. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what I can else can I add a part of, yeah, I love working with women. I mostly like most efficient result I achieve when I'm work, working with, with, with teams like, like that have female founders, female members, and uh, etc. Uh, this topic, yeah, what is really important is, is this, uh, this over this hype, over this female uh, gender equality is that, that uh, arise this uh, question of, of discrimination, of sexual abuse, and, and out of it, like, appeared so many stories in VC world, what you were men mentioning, that a lot, some people, like, de destroyed their ca career, like, like Dave McClure for 500 Startup, like, like he, he was, there, there, there was one sc scandal, and then appeared other scandals, so he was, like, 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 uh, totally, like, attacked from all these different side, sides, uh, uh, where he was, like, uh, or results of his sex, sexual abusement or some some uh, comments and etc. And after he reading that, he realized that uh, for for him at these moments when he was doing it, it was something normal or something that he was not considering that that harming. But when he realized that it harmed actually this person and uh, and their personality and and their their. Their, their their careers and, 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 and willingness actually to pursue the he he just said I'm sorry I was an asshole. So so we still need to work on the cultural side. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm sorry to cut you off. We still have like two minutes. Um, in these two minutes I would like to hear very briefly what is your call to action in general for improving like for, for the future generations maybe who are facing these big changes in, in front of them. And after that, I would like to leave two or three minutes for, for questions from, from the audience, if there, there are any. Okay? Now I'm going to start, you know? Yeah. Let's start Excellent. from the middle. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I think it's uh, my call to action is actually to do an action. Okay? And uh, I discuss about it tomorrow in, in, my, uh, in my presentation. Um, uh, People are afraid to take, uh, to go out of their comfort zone and just to try new things. Okay? Once you try something, you can't go wrong. And this is something that is very, you see it very strong uh, in the Israeli culture. There's no failure. It's not, it's a, it's not a shame to, to, to fail. Actually, if, when I see an entrepreneur that failed two or three times, I actually love it. But I love when he come to me and say, listen, I did this, this, and this and I failed because I did this thing right, this thing wrong, and he actually analyzed what's going on. Okay? In some cultures and in some, uh, uh, with some people, they either they try to hide their failure or they don't fail, so, which means they don't take an action. So as long as you're taking an action, you already started the path uh, uh, for success, and it doesn't really matter if it's entrepreneurship or schools or anything in your personal life. And, and my call to action, just whatever you do when you go out from this room, put an objective down the road and just start d getting there, okay? And go and try to enjoy the way and the, and, uh, the journey, which is uh, not always fun. And it's, uh, most of the time it's, it's uh, depressing and there's a lot of pressure, <laughs> but you should do that. So as, as Nike says, it says just do it. 
Yeah, as we discussed, like like world is moving so forward, and my call to action, like a be forward thinker, like to try to find your place. Like the reason why I, why I joined Humanic, a part of like that I so, so much appreciate their cause of doing was in fact okay. If someone is saying that blockchain is future, I want to jump on that train to see it from inside if it really is and learn it from inside. I could read blog posts, books about it, but I would never learn learn it a part of like really taking, like, think forward and do the action. Wow, it's a, it's a good topic and it's a good question and I need to think if I want to answer on that as representative of Israel or as Moshe Sarfati from Krypton Venture Capital. Okay. And I'll tell and I'll actually gonna share, I guess I'm gonna touch each one of the points. Obviously, you know, support by the government, it is something that is great and help to the ecosystem. Sometimes over support from government destroy ecosystems. It creates spoiled, and you see it a lot of you in Europe. You see that uh, startups in the early stages get money pretty easily, and what it actually, and then, then they go to the horizon 2020, and you know there's enough money rotating in the ecosystem, and actually they they not going out to the market really fast, and then they create, um, let's say, inefficient companies. Okay, so sometimes. Over-involvement by the government it's, 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 uh, can create damage. Uh, on, on Israel, on the other end, if you read and you see, you can read all those books that the government started to support the ecosystem during the 80s, and that's what brought to the success, uh, I don't buy it. Okay? It actually, you know, they, they, they say right now that whatever they did in the 80s, it's like someone like when you have a CEO of a successful company or when he writes a book, and you know all of these advice books, like inspirational books, and he said that it's because he drinks orange juice every morning, or eat uh, I don't know what, uh, or he drink a glass of wine before he go to sleep. This is why he was successful. So I, I think the Israeli ecosystem is a combination. There's a combination of military service, of young people going out to the ar going out of the army with a lot of experience and budget management and IT skills, and the chutzpah that I spoke before. Uh, it's not only the government. Obviously, the government is playing a nice role. Uh, I think here in Serbia, the government and the players, you know, obviously it's a young ecosystem. There's still, there are a lot of players trying uh, to do the best they can within the boundaries they are in. Okay? The ecosystem here, missing good startups. End of the day, if you're going to have good startups, money can be found. The government is always the easiest place to blame. But not always the government is the one that can actually create a good ecosystem or damage an ecosystem. So we need to look at it, right? Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we don't have any time left, but um, uh, all the speakers will be in the coffee area. So if you have any more questions for them, don't hesitate to, to go ahead and, and, uh, and ask them personally. Thank you very much. It was, it was a pleasure, at least for me. I think I can speak in, in the name of the speakers too. Thank, Thank you. you.